talk about history, I'm going to get you to try it out. You can go to put on some costume, and you're going to try out some weapons. And you're going to try... All right, now, the time of history that we're talking about, we need to know when we're talking about, first of all. Right, yes, my dear. 800 BC. Right, absolutely right. Now, a thousand years ago was the Vikings, isn't that right? Yeah. Two thousand years ago was Jesus Christ, isn't that right? Yeah. A thousand years before Jesus Christ was born was the was the Celts. So we're talking about a time of history that was as far away from Jesus Christ as we are, except it was before Jesus Christ. So three to four thousand years ago, right? That's when your dad was young. Now, before the Bronze Age, what did we have? Stone Age. What? Stone Age. The Stone Age. All right. Now, sir, you'd be my Stone Age man for a moment, would you? <laughs> now, this is Ugg from the Stone Age here. <laughs> Come on over here, sir, would you? Oh, now, of course, he would not have worn clothes like this, would he? No. No, he would not. So, he would have worn leather clothes made from what? <laughs> Skin. Yeah, yeah, he would have worn uh, animal skins, arms out, okay? Now, <laughs> now, I have to tell you, I'm no good at making Stone Age clothes, so this tends to be, they probably had better clothes than this, but anyway, I'll give you an idea. So he would have worn uh, clothes made out of animal skins and leather and the like of that, and of course, to keep him warm in the winter time, he would, Ugg would wear animal skins. Now, this is a reindeer skin. <laughs> so, Ugg would have used tools made out of stone, isn't that right? That's why we call it the Stone Age, isn't that right? Yeah. And Ugg here would have uh, went out to the forest, and how would he got his dinner? How would he got his dinner from the forest? Yes, sir. He killed animals, brought them home, and cooked them. And the wife, what would she be doing at the same time? Well, yeah, maybe so. But what did she, what did she bring to eat? Yes, my dear. She'd be grinding rice. Right, okay, that, that would be true. But she would have went out to the forest and would have got um, plants and stuff that you can eat. Like, she would have picked nettles. You can eat nettles. <laughs> and you can eat dandelions. <laughs> and dog <dog-eat. laughs> And, of course, they, they would have... This, this style of life that the Stone Age people have is called hunter gathering. The fellow went and did the hunting usually, and the wife went off and did the gathering. She gathered all the food from the forest. Now, that's okay way of living, except that you spend much of your time chasing after animals. Animals see you come and say, hey, that's one of them two-legged animals. <laughs> they kill you and eat you. Oh, I'm out of here. Now. And so they leave you there, and, you, and then you have to move house and chase after the animals somewhere else. And every year, you'd move to another place chasing after animals because the animals get too cute and start moving away from you. So, this takes a lot of time to hunt. So they invented a new style of living. Will you give Ugg a big round of applause for you? All right. Now, don't trip over that big long string of it there, but yeah, okay. So, uh, thank you very much. All right, now. Now, so far, we've had hunter-gathering. Now, plenty of people still live in, with hunter-gathering. If you go to the jungles of Africa or South America, uh, people still live that way. And <coughs> the American Indians used to hunt buffalo, and they used to get everything they needed from buffalo. So it's, you know, people still do it. But it's not a very good way to live, because it takes a long time to get the smallest bit of dinner, and so on. So, oh, then, the brainy idea said, forget chasing after animals, what I'll do is, I won't kill it, I will catch it, and I'll put it in a field, and I will feed it, and I will bring a male and female together, and they'll have babies, and then, <laughs> and when they grow up, they will have more babies, and then I'll have a whole herd of these animals, and then whenever I'm hungry, I'll go up to one of them and go, you die. <laughs> and I'll eat him. And then the wife said, well, if you're not going to go out to the forest, neither am I. So I'm going to get all the plants that I want to eat and put them here near where we live. And I go, instead of marching for miles through the forest, I'll just go, uh, that one, <laughs> and that one, and dinner. <laughs> now, when you grow animals and crops for food and for what you need, what do you call that? 
Farming. Believe it or not, that was a big idea one time. Now we all do, don't we? There are loads of farmers here. Are you all farmers or something? I hope we How about the farmers? Well, Nana's a farmer. All right. Well, you guys are feeding the rest of us, so I suppose we should be nice to you, should we? Anyway, so farming now meant that you would have animals, like sheep and pigs and goats and cows, and you grow them and eat them and so on. <coughs> now, the cow, of course, was the most, one of the most important of animals. What can you get from a cow? Oh, sorry. Yes, Missy. Milk and meat. Milk and meat, yes, right. Sir, sir. Well, you can eat the cow, can't you? Yeah. And you can milk the cow. Okay. But what can you do oh, with oh, the milk? Sir, sir, sir. Yes, sir. You, or you can, um, sir, you can sir. make um, clothes out of it. Milk? Oh. Of the milk? <laughs> sir, sir. Sir. No, no. What, what can um, you make out of milk? Um, oh, you can make bread. Oh, 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 well, not bread. Oh, butter. Now, in, in ancient Ireland, they had butter. And the, to keep it from melting, because they had no fridges, they used to put it in the bog. And even today, we find huge chunks of butter in the bog. It looks like a rock. But when you touch it, it's soft. And they used to open it up and eat, eat the butter. Now, yeah. now I, I know, it sounds mad, but that's the way they used to store it. Anyway, they also, what else can you make out of milk? Cheese is right. Now, cheese and uh, milk, uh, cream is what makes the butter, isn't it? But cheese, when you let milk go sour, the, it, there's a watery part and then a, a, a white, soft part that floats. You take that off and squish it together and let it dry out and it becomes cheese. Okay? And cheese is very good protein and everything in it. What else can you make out of, out of milk? Yeah. A tea. Cheese, yeah, we had that cheese. No, tea. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. Tea. Hmm? Tea. 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 They had no tea in those days, isn't that terrible? Oh, oh, yeah. tea. Okay. Yogurt. So now we have milk, butter, cheese and yogurt. All very nourishing, all very good for you. And as well as that then, you have the cow, who gives you meat and leather and bone. Bone you can make things out of, make little tools and things out of it. And horn, which you can make into drinking things. Would you drink anything out of a cow's no, horn? No, no. I would. So now we have, we have now. One of the problems with having all with cows and that is you have to feed them. So you have to clear the land and let them graze on the grass. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now the wife, of course, being very smart as all girls are, as we well know, is they grew very important crops. In fact. The most important crop of all we would use with this thing here. Any ideas? Wheat. Wheat. Flour. Wheat. Barley. Oh. Now this is wheat. Now they wouldn't have had a, 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 a plastic bucket like this. But they did have wheat. Whoa. Okay, right. There's a, there's a hole in the bucket there, Right. Who did that? Okay, right. Now, of course, wheat, you grow wheat. Now it's a kind of grass, isn't that right? Now let's talk about what you have to do. Right, first of all you have to get the seed and plant it in the ground. And then it grows. And it grows up to about this high. Now what do you have to do? With oh, 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 you have to harvest it. You have to harvest it. How do you harvest it? Uh, a tractor. Uh, harvester. Well, sir, this is sir, Bronze Age sir, Ireland. Sir, sir, a harvester. Sir, 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 sir. Yeah, but how do you cut the corn? Wait a minute, you have to cut the corn for it. Sir, 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 sir. Yeah. No, yeah, sir, you can pick it. Take a long time. That's right. You have to cut the corn. Now, it, right. In the early days, you used to make this out of out of the flint. Remember, we talked about the flint. You break up little bits of flint and put them in a in a in, in a bit of a stick and cut it with that. Now, now that you've cut the corn, now you have to get the the seed off the top of the corn. So how do you do that? Yes, sir. You grind it. Well, not really. What you do is you beat it. You get a stick and you beat the, the corn. And, and this, th that's called threshing. Okay? Now, now you have to get rid of the, the straw out of the corn. So what you do there is you get the corn and the straw and throw it up in the air. And the wind blows away the straw and what falls down is the corn. Okay? Then what you're left with is wheat at last. <laughs> now, of course, you can eat wheat. Ew. That's not, that's not very good, you know. So, you have to do something to the wheat first. Grind. Grind. Sir, would you grind it for me, please? Come on, you be my miller. Now, 
As you can see, I got two stones, one on top of the other. Let me just pull this apart just to show you. There's a hole in the top stone, and there's a stick sticking out of the bottom stone. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, you put those two together like this, not trapping your fingers. <laughs> and now what you do is you get a handful of corn, and you push it down in the hole in the top stone. Okay? Now what do you think you do? Spin it. Spin it around. Go. Now, the stone, the, the corn is getting caught between these two stones and it's crushing it into something. What's it making it into? Flour. Flour, right. that's right. Okay, hold there, I'm putting another stuff. Let's make a right in this, will we? <laughs> okay, right, let's see what we got. Now, sir, will you hold out your hand there and uh, just go like that. Now, what have we got now? Flour, isn't that right? Now, flour, now, the kind of flour we get nowadays is the white stuff, isn't it? Because in, nowadays what we can do is we can separate this brown stuff from the white stuff. But in fact, it's much more healthy to have this whole grain flour, okay? So this is whole grain flour. Now, now girls, now that you've got the flour, we can eat it now, right? <laughs> After all that work, what do we do now? You make bread at this. How do you make bread? You um, put it what do you do? What do you add this to to make bread? Uh, you can add it to eggs to make pancakes and that, right? What else can you do? Flour wrapping. Yeah. You wet it, yeah. With what? Milk. Water or milk or sour milk. You make, no, actually it makes it really nice. Now you can eat it and it's all doughy. <laughs> No, you got to do something else as well. You have to bake it now. So now what you do is you make a little oven out of stones, like a box shape or a cone shape, and you fill it with, put a little fire inside, put mud on the outside so the smoke doesn't all escape around the house, and then you put in your bread and you bake it. And now we have bread. Now the great thing about flour, as this fine miller will tell you, is that corn you can keep. As long as you keep it dry, it'll keep forever. Now with meat, it'll go off, it'll go bad, unless you, unless you eat it up or dry it out. Now what they used to do with meat was cut it up into thin strips and hang it up to dry. And then later on, they would cook it later on. But if it gets damp, it goes rotten. And then of course you get sick if you eat rotten meat, don't you? But with corn, as long as you kept it dry, it would never go off. Get the idea? Will you give our fine miller a big round of applause? Okay, so now, we now have meat, cheese, yogurt, eggs, butter, meat, flour, and bread. So now we are healthy, well-fed, and all that. In fact, of the people that they, the skulls and the bones that we find of the Celtic people that lived in Ireland, they were perfectly healthy, except they often had little scratches on their teeth, because sometimes bits of stone would break off the, this thing and get going with their brain. So they, ah! You know? But their teeth were much more healthy than ours are because they had no sugar. If they wanted to sweeten things, they had to use honey. Now, okay, so now this thing is called a quern. That's a queer name, but that's what they call it, a quern, you know? Anyway, so now, Q-U-E-R-N, quern. Okay, now, a quern. Anyhow, so, it would be usually the job of the young ladies in the house at <laughs> with the quern. Now, the men still went out and hunted, but by now they were doing more and more farming because it was much easier and, and to do. Now, when you have more time, it gives you more time to try out new ideas, okay? Now, one of the new ideas that they would have tried out was metalworking, okay? Now, up to now, remember, we were using stone. Now, the, this metal here, this brown metal, anyone know? Iron. No, it's not iron. It's not bronze either. Oh, copper. Copper. Now, copper, if I cut this into the shape of a knife, it'd be okay as a knife. The only problem is, it goes blunt very quickly because it's, it's quite a soft metal. If I stood on this, I'd bend it, like you see. Now, if I want to make copper much stronger than this, I have to melt it and add in another kind of metal. Oh, oh, iron. Not iron, no. Bronze. Well, I want to make bronze, but I need copper and something else. Stone. No, not stone. Okay, I'll help you out. It's called tin. In the old days, they used to put it on the outside of tin cans. That's what they used to call them, tin can. Anyway, it's a kind of a silvery colored metal. Now, how do you melt this? What do you do? Oh. Yeah, you need a very hot fire. 
Now, what you do is you get a, a crockery bowl called, um, uh, called a crucible, right? And then you light this fire and you have fellas pumping air through it with, with, with bellows. They're kind of like, uh, yeah, uh, like bags made of uh, leather and it pumps the air through it. And it gets really hot and it melts the two metals and then you stir them up and you make a new metal called bronze. Okay, and this is why they call it the Bronze Age. All right. Okay, well, let's look at one of the things that they made out of bronze to start with. Let's see if I can find that without too much hassle. Okay, that didn't dry. Okay, that didn't work. Okay. Now, let's get out in the van, I'd say. Yeah, goodbye, you left it in the van. Right. Okay. Now, you can now, remember we were talking about cutting the corn? Yeah. All right. There is a tool that cuts corn. I'm going to draw a picture of it. I've seen that a little bit bad. Uh, yeah. It's got a blade, a curved blade on it like this, and a, a wooden handle on it like that. Now, this is the sharp edge here. Now, this is for cutting corn. Any idea what it's called? Yes, sir? It nearly happened. A scythe is what you think of, isn't it? Now a scythe is a much bigger one. This is a small one, about the size that I've drawn it here. And what you do is you bend over at the waist, get an armful of corn, and cut the corn. And it's much better... No, that's okay, I'll, I'll show them that now. It's, it's, it's a slightly different size. Yeah, but the ancient Egyptians had a sword that looked a little bit like this tool. Now this is called a sickle, okay? You wrap it around the corn and cut it. Now you have a good. Now the thing with with making stuff out of stone is that stone gets broken very easily, and when it does, well then you have to take it out and get another piece put in there. So metal you can sharpen up. So now they were starting to use bronze. Now I need a good farmer and a bad farmer. Oh, that man and that man there. Right. This fella looks like the good farmer. Are you the good yeah, farmer? Yeah. yeah. And this is the bad farmer. Right? <laughs> All right. You stand over there, bad farmer. Okay. Right. Now. Good farmer has been working all summer long planting his crops. Then comes autumn time, he is cutting the corn, he has a pain in his back from using the sickle, and he is sick of it. Then he gets out sticks and he starts baiting the corn with the stick, knocking the ears of corn off, then throwing it up in the air, to, and then the wind blows away the straw, and then he collects up all that and stores it in his house. This not-so-busy farmer, who hasn't done very much during the summer except lay around in the sun and have a good time, goes up to this fellow and says, Can I have some of your corn? <laughs> this fellow here says, Would you ever go on? Isn't that right? And so this guy thinks, I will beat that out of the Isn't that right? So they have a fist fight. And this fellow gets the face bent off him by that fellow because he's bent off him. <laughs> All right, okay, right. So this guy thinks to himself, I will, I will get, I will get, I will get that fella, I will get him back somehow. So he goes and gets himself a weapon made of bronze, which please God don't say I've left out with that one. Can someone bring in a small axe for me? No, a small one. No, no, a small one than that. That's the one. That's that fella there. Now leave that there. Right, now. The bad farmer thinks to himself, I will scull the young fella. And I will steal the corn over his dead body, so I will. But this fella knows about what he has in his mind. And so he's been busy making stuff out of bronze. And so he's made one of these. What have we got here? Come on over here, sir. What have we got here? A spear. A spear. And so this fella's he's got a bit wobbly from stabbing teachers, but there you are. Now, now, this fella here, uh, now, let me just show you what we have. This is a copy of one of the ones in the National Museum. A friend of mine works there, and, and he made a copy of it for me. This is the blade, of course, of the axe. Now, you may notice that there's a little bit of the bronze sticking up out of the corner, so that the blade goes all the way through this L-shaped handle. Do you see the idea? Yeah. And then it's tied on and glued in there. And, of course, it makes a fairly handy weapon, doesn't it? If I was to hit that fellow with that, I'd, I'd give him another earring, wouldn't I? Now, but of course, this fellow has a little more reach because he's got a spear, isn't that right? Again, with a bronze head on it. And of course, if he gets too close, he'll get himself a brand new belly button, isn't that right? <laughs> so he thinks himself, no, I won't do that. I'll get 20 of my mates, and we will kill that fellow. 
So he gets 20 more of his mates. Now, remember, they're fighting over corn. So this fella thinks, I will steal his cows instead. So now, this fella has to now defend his cows from this looter ma here. Isn't that right? Now, right then. So now, for the first time, because we have corn and cows, we have warfare. Before this, when you wanted to eat, you went into the forest and got what you want. Now you can store what you need, and when you can store it, it means some guy can try stealing it, which means he will, which then means you have to defend it, which now brings warfare. Will you give our fine warriors a round of applause? Okay, so now we want to discuss a little bit of how bronze is made. Now we know that if you melt metal, it's like water, you can pour it into things and all that sort of stuff. But how do you make it into the shape? Right. Uh, can I have a, a bronze worker? Sir, sir, right. Can I have the lady there? Maybe we'll have a lady for a change. Now, what have I got here? A top of a spear. A top of a spear, a spearhead. Now, this lady comes up to me and says, Look, I made out of bronze. <laughs> and I go, Oh, daddy! Oh, daddy! I like it! That's daddy! Could you make me one? And she says, I could make you one exactly like this. Could you? Thank you. <laughs> so now, we're going to get this lady to make a little bit of bronze. Now, unless we set fire to the school, which of course we would love to do, but... Uh, <laughs> now, if, if I just show you what I have here, it's a bronze box with some clay in it, okay? Oh, now, it's a very fine oh, clay. Okay, it's just, it's just dirt, okay? No biggie, loads of dirt. Okay, now, move that over the way. Now. If you walk in mud, what do you leave behind? Footprints. Footprints. If I put this down in the mud, what would I leave behind? A spear, a spear print, wouldn't I? So, my dear, I want you to put the spear right in there and push it down as hard as you can, right? Now, as hard as you can, that's a go. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Now, now what I want you to do is flatten down the clay all around it so that it won't fall out when we turn it up to show it. Okay, flatten it down. Come on. What's keeping you? <coughs> Very slow, these bronze workers. <laughs> okay. Right, have you got it yet? All right. Let's show you what we've done. All we've done is we've put the spearhead into the clay. Okay? <laughs> okay? Now, what I want you to do is, very carefully, I want you to pick the spearhead out of the clay. Okay? Now. Let's look what we have left behind. I don't know if you can see this too well, but let's see if we can. Can you see the footprint? Yeah, no, no, no. Can you see the print? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if I pour molten metal into that, what shape will it take? The spearhead. Exactly like that. <laughs> Isn't that right? So now, we can now make spearheads really, really easy, and axe heads, and just about anything else as well that we want, out of bronze using this molding technique. Now there's another way of doing this, of course. If you don't have a spearhead, what you can do is you can make your spearhead out of wood and make a print of that. And then when you pour in the metal, it'll copy the spear print made of wood. But if you don't have wood, what you can use is beeswax. Now you know when a honey when the bees make honey, they put it in a honeycomb. Yeah. yeah. Well that honeycomb is made of wax, right? And if you melt the wax and you can carve it into shape until you get a spearhead shape or an axe head shape or whatever. Now, of course, a wax spearhead is not much use, is it? You just poke a hole in a guy's head and break. <laughs> so what you do, though, is you bury the bronze, or uh, bury the beeswax in the clay, make a little hole and pour in the metal. What do you think when the hot metal hits the wax? What do you think it'll happen to the wax? It'll turn into water. It'll melt, won't it? Yeah. And it'll run into the clay. And then the bronze will fill in where the where the wax used to be. And we'll end up with a copy of the of the wax spearhead. Isn't that right? So will we give the lovely lady a round of applause? Okay, so now, of course, Ireland, in order to organize a, a fellas to fight, you need fellas in charge. Isn't that right? And so you now have to organize commanders and second in command and all these other guys. But now, you need to make sure that you you got somewhere safe to keep your stuff. Right. Let's talk about the kind of places that they lived in. Right. Now, 
You all know what a basket is, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment this daft idea. Imagine you make a basket big enough to be a house. Oh, oh my God. Right, let's, let's see if I can draw a funny picture of that. Right, basically a circular shape like this, but it's made out of basket stuff. Now, I'm talking, now, the, the, the pole sticking down on the ground would be as thick as the spear head, spears here. Of course, you'd have a doorway in the middle here. And then you'd weave sticks in around through it like that. What in that? Okay, and these are all the poles stuck down in the ground with, stu with sticks woven through them, okay? So we've made like a gigantic basket with a doorway. Now, of course, you bring the wife into the brand new house and say, what do you think of that now? That's good. That's made out of sticks. <laughs> And then the wind blows, and the wife goes, <laughs> <laughs> It's freezing there, and we're blowing cold, so it is. <gasps> so, ah, but I'm not finished yet. Now what i got to do is you've got to put, put mud, mud on the outside oh, of the oh, oh, bottle and daub. Okay, now, they didn't always use mud. In fact, what was better was animal poo. <laughs> straw in it, it sticks together better. So you push this into the outside of your house and you get a whole wall made of this stuff. Okay? So there we have our wattle and doll house. Now the wife is still not happy though. So it starts to rain. What do we miss on the house? A roof, for goodness sake. What are we going to use to make a roof out of? Straw. Straw. Okay, right. Now we make a straw roof and you put a little hole in the top, okay? Okay, and you light a fire in the middle of the floor. See, no comfort in So any smoke that comes up out of the fire will go out through the little hole in the top. Well, it will let in a small amount of rain, but only a very little amount. You'd be surprised how little. Now, of course, you know, and then of course you need another house over here to put your, to put your, uh, your, your um, corn in. Okay? And then your cousin might live over here and this one over here, okay? And so you'd have a whole bunch of these houses together. But of course, along comes Bad Farmer with all his mates and they decide we're going to rob this group of people. So what you have to do now is you have to build a wall all the way around the house. Okay, I'm coming to that. Very good. You're way ahead of me. Good lad. Right. Uh, and of course, this is like a, a wall made of sticks and stuff and you'd have one big doorway in it. Now we have a fort, don't we? Yeah, but why what's the use of having a door in? What is it what? What's the use of having a door in? So you can shut the door and not him, let him the bad guys. Now this wall will be higher than this roof here, okay? So the fellas will be trying to get in, you know. But of course if you get enough of fellas attacking your your fort, then you're in trouble. So what you do is you put it on an island and have a little tiny thing here joining the land. So there's all in here is water. So, what did you call it? A cranog. A cranog, right. So, now, so, this little bridge here is only narrow enough for one man to come. So this bad farmer comes with a hundred guys with spears, right? And they have to go one at a time. <laughs> and the guy's standing at the gate going, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> you see? So even a small amount of people could defend a cranog, isn't that right? So that kept you safe. See the area? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Instead of having a little bridge, you can have stepping stones, and you can have stepping stones that don't work. You know, when you step on it, it goes down into the water. You know? Okay. And of course, all all you guys who live in the Cranoke will know. Not that one. Not that one. But this one. And of course, when a guy is coming to attack you on stepping stones like this. Come on. And you're standing at the door going, you're dead. <laughs> okay, so now because we have armies and we have to organize ourselves. So the fellow in charge, the fellow in charge of everybody, what's he called? A master. Yeah the, yeah, the king, if you like, okay? Or a chieftain. And the king has other people underneath. And so Ireland had a great civilization, what they call. Basically, the king was in charge of everything, then you had the nobles, and then below the nobles, you had the workmen who made the things out of, out of metal and wood and all that sort of stuff. And then at the very bottom, you had the slaves. But as we're talking about, uh, about these people, we better have a quick look to see what they would have worn. So I need a beautiful oh, 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 lady. Oh, that lady there would be more than beautiful enough, I'm sure. Now, 
The beautiful young lady, come on over, step over that there without killing yourself. Now, of course, they would have still dressed like Ugh in the corner there. <laughs> They still like to wear fur and the like of that, but by now they were wearing something else. Oh, sir. What's this made of? Sheep. A sheep, right. And if I get a sheep skin and pluck some of the wool off of it, bah, shut up. Now, <laughs> I got a bit of sheep's wool. Now, I can make clothes out of that. All right. But if I get it and twist it, I can make it into thread. You see the idea? Yep. Now, of course, it takes quite a while just to make that much thread, and then I'm going to need hundreds of meters of it to make it into clothes. So they used to spin it. Okay. Let me see if I have a spinner here handy. I don't to do that. Right. So what you do is you have a thing like a spinning top, and you attach this on top of the spinning top, and the spinning top spins, and it makes it into a wool. Now, maybe I'll draw a little pic of that, seeing that I left it out in the van again. Okay? So you have a stick with a little cylinder thing on the bottom, and then there's that. You put your string on the top here, and you get that spinning. And of course, that will twist the wool very quickly, won't it? Yeah. And so this lovely lady here would spend much of her days spinning the wool. But as she did, the first thing she did was made herself a dress. Now, she would wear a dress down to her ankles, but over the top, she would also wear this kind of apron sort of thing, okay? And because they had arms up, because they, uh, they'd have a long white dress, then they would make a belt like this and hang it around the waist like that, okay? So this is what the ladies would have worn. Now, likely it's not they would have covered their head as well so the hair didn't fall into the dinner or whatever, but what about one of the guys? Can I have a guy? Oh, 